Guys, you've heard me talk about Loom before, right? The Loom Network. Love the company. They build the Zombie Battleground, a collectible card game that's on the blockchain. They have also have Crypto Zombies, a series of awesome tutorials on blockchain. They have a couple cool little tools as well. Uh, it's a great, uh, great company. A lot of things going on. And one of the things they have is a side chain that they, you have your own chain built on the side of Ethereum. Uh, tonight, I want to show you how to get that up and running on your local machine and how to uh, deploy a simple application to that blockchain. Come on, let's go. All right, I don't want to waste too much of your time tonight. I'm going to go really fast. We're going to hit a lot of really cool subjects, uh, but it should give you all the tools you need to get your first simple store application up and running on the uh, uh, Loom sidechain, right? So if you go to loomx.io, you can go to de developer, start building now, which will take you to the documentation. Okay, and just, I don't know, start oh, JavaScript. Just it, go here. And you can click installation from SDK up at the top. Okay, that's where I'm at right here. Now, before we do this, we need to get um, Linux running on our Windows 10 machine, right? So, in case you didn't know that it's possible, that's possible. On this installation page, they have a link for Windows subsystem for Linux. And basically, it just tells you all you need to do is go uh, open a PowerShell or a command prompt as an administrator. It looks like it just says PowerShell, maybe command prompt won't work. And you just enable the optional feature to allow Linux to run, right? And then you're gonna open up the store, your Windows store, and you just search for Ubuntu, right? Uh, ugh, ugh, Ubuntu. You could pick a different one. This is this uh, this uh, is really going to be dedicated to Ubuntu. This this uh, tutorial. So I go here. I've got an install button. I click install, and it installs. Piece of cake. So once you click launch, a terminal will open up, and it will install for a couple minutes, and then you'll get to this point where you've got your own uh, Unix machine running. Linux machine. You'll want to give it a username. It'll ask for a password. Make it a simple password. You won't forget. All right, once you've done that, you'll see your little uh, terminal sitting there with your name, and it says to run a command, you'll run sudo, blah, 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 blah. All right, let's kick right back over to the documentation um, side of things. First thing we're going to do is we're going to curl. We're going to go get the uh, loom network. Just tap it right in there. Now, curl should already be installed on your Linux machine. You won't have things probably unless something changes in the future and it always changes, but hopefully these set of instructions will help you. I spent days and days trying to get to this point. So I hope you appreciate the fact that I'm trying to give you all my knowledge and to save you days of pain because I mixed a couple articles and I tried doing something one way and I should have done it the other way. And it was such a pain in the butt. So I got to figure it figured out anyway. You should see that node's not installed. That's a problem, you're gonna need that. And you can't just do what it tells you to do, sudo apt install node.js. Tells you to just do that. You know, oh, that sounds easy. I'm just gonna sudo apt install node.js. Now, you can't do that on uh, Ubuntu machines or a Debian machine or even a Mint. Um, can you shut down, please? Thank you. You gotta do something else. So, one second. We'll flip back over to the documentation. <clears throat> Second set of instructions is uh, loom init so we're going to just tap uh, period loom init that creates your genesis file that has to be out there then we're going to run it loom run boom we're running a local loom blockchain on our local linux machine that's running windows 10 how cool is that right so that's sitting there because we're running this now we can't do anything else with this one it's running it's listening let's open up another one all right now um What's next? Oh, now we want to get Truffle and Solidity. So they have a nice little package uh, to show you how to use Truffle and to easily uh, deploy a, a DAP. So we're going to push that button. We're going to click that link. I'll put all these links on the description. You'll get all these links, right? So now, now that we have the Loom Network, we don't need to do this. We've already done that. Now we're going to generate a private key and a public key. So it's just simply putting in that. Oops. Put in, paste in. There we go. We have a local address. Um, beautiful. Now we need to go get our Truffle example. For those of you that don't know, Truffle is a package, um, kind of like uh, Express in Node. If you've ever used Express, it basically is a framework that helps do a bunch of the low line stuff that you don't that you'd have to do yourself if you're trying to uh, um, if you're trying to deploy uh, a, an app 
to the to a blockchain. So Truffle just handles a bunch of it for you. So they put up they made a package for us, and we can go get it. Git clone. You should have Git installed too, hopefully. Um, and there you go. We've just we've just cloned it into uh, a Truffle example folder. Now I am lazy. I'm just copying all this. I could be typing it out myself. But so now we're going to change directory to the Truffle example folder. Boom. Now we're going to copy that private key we got into that folder. We need it. I don't know exactly why, but we do. All right. Now here's where it gets tricky. If you're following along on the documentation, you think all I got to do is hit yarn and I'm good to go. No. A, you need node. You, you badly need node. Um, there's a whole bunch of stuff you're going to need and you don't have yarn installed. So let me show you. Here's where we go. So I got myself some instructions up in here. <clears throat> We're going to pop this open. First thing is we're going to update. We're going to allow authenticated because the things that we need to get updated needs to be some of them need to be unauthenticated and still go through. So we just sudo apt update allow unauthenticated. Now, if you've never used um, if you've never used Linux, you might not know sudo means super user do something. Uh, so it's going to ask you for that password that you gave it when you first installed. Once you do this once, it doesn't ask you again. Hopefully, did I remember my password? I sure did. So there we go. We're off. We're off, and we're getting. Uh, updates to apt okay once you're done with that you'll see that uh, it says 183 packages can be upgraded i don't think they have to be but if you wanted to you sudo apt upgrade you could do that i'm not going to do that for this video uh, i've made it work with it's worked fine without doing that um, and then we want to get build essential and we want to get curl this is just the instructions that i was given to get node correctly on ubuntu so we're going to grab is build essential and curl we already got curl but i guess it updates curl who knows who knows this Linux thing? Does anyone know this Linux thing? It's a mystery to mankind. All right, that'll go for a while. Then you have to get Node from nodesource.com. Um, and it's Debian's uh, version, so Debbie. Debbie likes Node. Um, oh, I just put a slash there. All right, so if you'll notice down here at the bottom, I actually get the instructions. I've got it up here that um, it tells you what to do, and they're they're accurate, they're correct. Right here, sudo apt get install. Um, yes, Node.js for automatic. <clears throat> yeah, don't worry about it. There's a bunch of arguments. Yeah, I think that means that you're not going to be. It's not going to stop on prompts. It's going to do it automatically. So there we go. We're getting Node.js now. We can get Node.js because we got it from the node source correctly, and we can use that version. And is this going to take a bit? Yep, that took a little bit like everything else. Um, there's some ones I think that are even longer than that. But uh, So sit back and enjoy. Such as this one. Now we have to go out and we have to get the C and the C++ compilers. So we're going to do that. We're going to paste it right in there. Isn't this fun? Ha! That one didn't take long at all. Um, but I already had the newest versions. Okay, somehow along the way I got the newest version. All right, now we're going to go get the yarn package. The proper yarn package. Yarn is like an alternative to npm and or npm, the Node Package Manager. So they use yarn here. So for a while, I was trying to do some npm install commands and then do yarn, and it was jacking everything up. So don't do that. Follow my instructions, and it will work. I'll prove it to you. All right. So we went and got that. This is going to tee off the uh, inputs and outputs. I don't know exactly what. So. When you get some inputs and, and you get some outputs, it writes it to two different places because you're using the sudo t command. Don't really need to know. Just do it. All right. And now we're going to go out and we're going to get an update. We're going to get install yarn. It just didn't update for us, but whatever. We'll just do it. If it works, I'll do it. I'll sit here. I ain't afraid. Is this going to take a while? Yarn? Nope. All right. So now we have... When I, we are ready to go, okay, so if you go back to the instructions, you could go back to the instructions, but it still doesn't work exactly right because it just says yarn, yarn, deploy. For me, on when on this machine, without my permissions elevated, I have to do sudo yarn. This would be the same as saying uh, npm install, so it's going to read the package JSON, and it's going to go out and get all the packages, uh, and sudo because I need elevated privileges. So sudo yarn, and off she goes. This will take a while. I'll be right back. Okay, yarn has finished. Only one more thing we have to do, and that's deploy it. But before we do that, I want to show you where your files are at in Linux subsystem. Okay, so 
You go to your user, your app data, your local, you'll go to packages. And if you're using Ubuntu, it'll be Canonical something or other, which that's a cool name, right? Canonical Group Limited. That's amazing. So right in here is local state. And then you got your root file system. Now listen, don't mess with these files. You can look at them, but don't mess with them. Okay, because it'll it'll jack everything up from what I understand. I haven't tried. Someone just said don't do it. So if I go to home tvance, I go to my truffle dap chain, I'll see a truffle config file that's got some interesting stuff in it. I can go into contracts and I can see a contract. Nope. Uh, maybe it's source. Source <clears throat> contract JS has got some interesting stuff. I'm planning on making some more videos going a lot deeper than just this. This is just the first video. So uh, we'll get into that. But I just wanted to show you where those files are in case you're were like me trying to find them forever. Uh, so there's another tidbit. All right, man. We've done it all. All we have to do now is sudo yarn deploy, and it will pick the deploy. The, the, it'll pick the uh, default blockchain, which is pointing to the um, your local blockchain. And right here, it just hasn't been able to connect no seeds, whatever. And so I'm going to hit this, and we should be going. Truffle deploy, yo. This is beautiful. Download the compiler. It's going to it's going to compile the. Uh, the uh, contracts into uh, ABIs and, and I don't remember the, the two extensions, but it's going. It makes a really neat noise, too. Here, listen to that. So there's a migrations folder in the Truffle uh, framework that, that deploys a whole bunch of stuff, including your contracts. So in this example, we deployed a couple different contracts. We deployed uh, one for tokens and coins which something we'll do later and then we deployed a simple store so if you scroll up you'll see here's your contract address and this is what you'll need that address to uh, connect to it via web 3 which is how on the web you a JavaScript framework that we can talk to our contracts on the blockchain so pretty cool right <clears throat> but pretty simple as well but what I plan on doing is going through the documentation they got great documentation I'm gonna find out how to make games or how to interact with the blockchain. They've got examples how to use Unity, uh, Go, JavaScript, uh, Phaser. And so we're going to have some follow-up videos to this, try to make some more fun stuff, learn a little bit more how to do that, learn how to uh, move tokens from the side chain to the Ethereum chain. Uh, lots of cool stuff. Stick with me. Give me a sub. Hit that bell. Subscribe. Uh, maybe a thumbs up or a comment. I appreciate you guys hanging out with me tonight. Have fun. Peace. All right, I don't want to waste. All right, I don't want to waste too much. Ah!